Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa nukmunu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyidati a'malina من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سَيَصْلَى نَارًا ذَاتَ لَهَبٍ وَامْرَأَتُهُ حَمَّالَةَ الْحَقَبُ فِي جِيدِهَا حَبْلٌ مِّن مَّسَبٍ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ مَعُلَانَ الْعَظِيمِ وَصَدَقَ رَسُولَ النَّبِيُّ الْكَرِيمِ وَنَحْنُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ وَالشَّاكِرِينَ وَالْحَمْدِ الحمدللہ رب العالمین Respected brothers and sisters السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ I just recited to you سورہ تبت یدہ It is called سورہ لہب as well It is a مکی سورہ with five verses And this is also part of the last ten سورہ of the Quran And for the last three or four Jumas I have been covering surahs from the last Jews of the Quran and from the last ten surahs of the Quran. They are short surahs, very easy to remember, very easy to memorize. And this one is the 111th surah in the sequence. So just uh, before surah Ikhlas is this surah. Now this surah has been named surah Lahab and Lahab means flame, like we have the flame of the fire. And this is named after Abu Lahab who was the uncle of Rasulullah His name, real name was Abdul Huzza but his laqab or the way people would normally call him was Abu Lahab. Abdul Huzza. Huzza was actually one of the idols that the Mushrikeen used to worship and his name was Abdul Huzza just like we have the name Abdullah Abdul Rahman means in the slave of Allah, slave of Al Rahman. So, in the days of the ignorance, they used to be called things like slave of Uzza, the idol. Sometimes they would even have Abdul Shams, slave of the sun, or Abdul, uh, Abdul Kaaba, slave of Kaaba. This name, Uzza, of the idol, has also been mentioned in Surah Najam. So he was called Abdul, uh, Abu Lahab because Lahab means flame and he was called Abu Lahab because the complexion of his skin, of his face was very fair and very reddish. So red that it seemed like it was on fire and that is how his came, name came to be called as Abu Lahab and he used to feel proud of being called Abu Lahab. He was the real uncle, the real paternal uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In Urdu we call chacha, so meaning brother of his father. But being his uncle, he was also a staunch opponent of him and considered him to be his enemy. When Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam started to receive the revelations from Allah, and he was declared a messenger. At that point, he received this revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'udhu billahi minash shaitu wa anir ajeem. Wa anzir ashiratakal akrabeen. 
meaning and bond your closest relatives. That is Prophet ﷺ tell your closest relatives and warn them that if they did not leave the shirk and disbelief and did not bring faith on the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then be prepared to face the punishment that will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the punishment of hellfire so before the revelation of this verse Rasulullah was preaching about Islam, about the oneness of Allah just to the household members, very close people who were living within the house so when he received this commandment to go and now start preaching to the nearest relatives as well and extend the dawah to them and warn them to prepare themselves and protect themselves from the hellfire it is at this time that he gathered his tribe Quraysh and gave them the dawah openly the incident that I am going to mention is an incident which a lot of us have learned during our you know, Islamia course, during our childhood, where he had gathered his tribe and then asked them whether he trusts uh, Rasulullah or they don't trust Rasulullah So Safa is the name of a hill near Masjid al-Haram and it is the same hill where we go for our Manasik Hajj for Sa'i we do the sa'i between Safa and Marwa and this is something that happens in Hajj and also during Umrah so when Rasulullah received the commandment to warn the ones nearest to him he climbed the hill Safa and he called upon the people of Quraysh and there was the, these were the people from his tribe these were part of his family and he called upon them by saying Wa sibai haku ya Quraysh now since the days of the ignorance in the Arab world the tribes were always fighting with each other there were some tribes which were friends with each other they will always support them and there were other tribes which were considered to be enemies and in such a situation they were always on the lookout they were always watching their backs if another tribe is preparing to attack them so in order to communicate to their own tribesmen that another tribe is going to attack they had come up with this way of communication that if maybe the informer or somebody from within the tribe got the news that another tribe is going to attack them then he would climb at a very high point in the city, maybe a hill and then he would call upon his tribesmen and he would say Vasiba Habu <laughs> and this really meant that this morning is a dangerous morning and you should prepare for it the mention of morning is because the tribes normally used to attack in the morning and this sentence Wasiba Hahu was very famous and well understood amongst the Arabs and the moment they would hear the sentence they would gather around the person and would ask them about the source of information and also when the attack is going to happen so when Rasulullah who was aware of this method he climbed Safa and called out Wasiba Hahu and specifically he called out the people of Quraysh so when everyone had heard about the message they gathered around him and this is the incident that I have referred to when I mentioned that this is something that we have heard of and learned during our childhood so he asked his tribesmen the question that if I tell you that there is an army behind the mountain which is going to attack you at any time will you believe me? will you trust that what I am praying, saying to you is true? now for 40 years Rasulullah was living amongst the people of Quraysh and for these 40 years Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was building up his very high character so the people who were around him they had evaluated him and seen him from all angles he was called Sadiq and Amin. Sadiq meaning truthful. They had seen that he had never lied in his life, always telling the truth. And Amin meaning the one who keeps trust. So if somebody would give him a trust, sometimes he would give you know, some armor or something in trust when they were traveling. So when they would come back, they would get it in full. So he was very trustworthy as well. So that is why when he asked the question, 
to people that would you trust me if I tell you that an army is going to attack? Then they unanimously said that why would they not trust you? We will surely trust you because we have never seen you lie ever. So in response to this, then Rasulullah delivered the warning message to them. And he said, that if you are trusting me, that when I am telling you that there is an army behind the mountain, ready to strike, then I want to warn you of a danger which is even bigger than that. And that is that if you don't have faith in the oneness of Allah, and you don't give up the idol worship altogether, then a day will come when you will have to face a much bigger torment in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he explained to them that if they believe him to be a truthful person, then they also must believe that he is the messenger of Allah when he tells them. And as a messenger to warn the people that if you don't believe in what I say, then fear the time of a big calam calamity that will fall upon you. This is the same message that I found across in Surah Nur as well. In Surah Nur verse 1, Allah Ta'ala says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ أَنْ أَنْذِرْ قَوْمَكَ أَنْ أَنْذِرْ قَوْمَكَ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Indeed, we sent Noah to his people. Noah means Noah alayhi salam. Inna arsanna nuhan ila qawmi. To warn about what? Warn your people before there comes to them a painful punishment. And it is the same message that Rasulullah is delivering so many hundreds of years after Noah alayhi salam. So when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam delivered this message, then those people who believed him to be truthful, they had developed a spark of faith in their heart. But his uncle Abu Lahab, who was also present there receiving the message, he said in response to what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave, gave as a dawa, he said, "Tabban laka ya Muhammad, alihada jamaatana," meaning, "Nauzubillah, you be destroyed. Did you call us for this?" And not only that, he did not listen to what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, but he also insulted him and prayed for him to perish. After this incident, he was constantly finding ways to give trouble to Rasulullah And whenever he would know that he is going out to preach, to give da'wah of the oneness of Allah, he would actually follow Rasulullah and tell people not to listen to him. This was his own uncle, Abu Lahab, acting against Rasulullah But really things did not stop him. His wife, whose name was Umm Jameel, she was also very religiously opposing Rasulullah and would support his husband in this opposition. The narrations tell us that when she would get the news that Rasulullah is going out for preaching the oneness of Allah, she would gather some branches, you know, some dried branches with, with lots of thorns on it and would actually come and place that in the way of Rasulullah so he would get caught in his clothes and you know he would get hurt and basically call him, cause him pain and pain and trouble and agony. There is also another narration we know that Rasulullah used to get up for tahajjud, he would pray tahajjud, he would also recite the Quran and once it happens that he fell ill and he was unable to wake up for tahajjud and do all his ibadah that he was routinely doing. And it is that time when Umm Jameel Nanzubillah said that the shaitan that used to come to Rasulullah has stopped coming. Nanzubillah. And it is at this incident when Surah Wadduha was revealed. Wadduha wa layli idha saja. Tabbat yada abhi laha bim wa tabb. May the hands of Abu Lahab perish and he himself perish. Ma abna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab. Neither his wealth nor worldly gains will benefit him. Sayas la naran la talahab. He will burn in flaming fire. Wamra atuhu hamma la talhaqab. 
and so with will his wife the career of thorny kindling kindling means something that you would use to kindle a fire to start a fire so since she was bringing those you know uh, branches with thorns so that is what is being referenced over here fi ji deha habulu min masad around her neck will be a rope of twisted fiber now we go verse by verse tabat yada abila habi wa tab may the hands of abu lahab perish and he himself perish the last word is batab so this is where allah says he himself perish and it means that allah has ordained his death in a very painful way that you can already consider that he is perished because of that incident that's going to happen so at the time of ghazwa badr when the mushrikeen and the disbelievers met in the battle he did not go himself out of the fear of death and he appointed somebody else to replace him and this is because at the back of his mind he had the fear that if rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the true messenger then he is going to get the nusra of allah the help of allah and it is very likely that he is going to get killed at the hands of the muslims so he stayed behind and all the other leaders like abu jahal umayya bin khalf abi bin khalf they all went to the battle he stayed in makkah so the battle of badr took place and four months had passed after the battle when he developed, developed a contagious disease and that disease started to show signs on his body so he couldn't actually hide it it was showing maybe on his face on different parts of his body now this corona virus has really taught us about the dev- devastation of a pandemic and the arabs they had also seen many pandemics and they were familiar with that and they knew that this pandemic could actually wipe out entire towns on top of that they were also a very superstitious nation as we have learned from the uh, from the stories of the days of the ignorance and they were so superstitious that they actually would not let the person who was diseased stay within the home so they was they would actually oust oust the person from the house make him stay outside sort of like isolation but not taking care of the person so they ousted him from the home and put him somewhere outside he was isolated from the community no one would come and inquire him about his health for the fear of catching the disease themselves so he stayed in this miserable state and died in this miserable state his body had started to rot and also started to give a pound smell and his relatives were so tired of this that they quickly dug up a grave and put the person in and put the burden back on so what allah said the last word was tab that he is perished he showed people in front of their eyes how abdullah perished ma abna anhu ma duhu wa ma tasab this is the second verse of the surah neither his wealth nor worldly gains will benefit him and this verse is basically reflecting upon one incident that when he had crossed all boundaries in opposing rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam somebody at that at that time mentioned to him that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a truthful person we all know for the 40 years that we have interacted with him he has never lied in his life and if he is telling the truth this time as well that he is a messenger of god and that there is going to be a day when you will die and you will be resurrected and brought in front of allah subhanahu wa taala then what will you do on that day how will you save yourself and he replied that i have got so much of wealth and i will give that wealth and then buy myself out of it and thus i will save myself from the punishment and this verse is actually an answer to that claim that he made that neither his wealth could save him at that time when he was being isolated nor what he had earned could save him from such a death and he left this world empty handed sayasla naran zata lahab so we just saw what allah did to this person in this world and now we are talking about the akhirah sayasla naran zata lahab we have observed brothers and sisters with our own eyes that we have seen so many deaths in our lives you know a person could be a millionaire or a billionaire 
person could be Harun, who lived during the time of Musa a very wealthy person, who has been mentioned in the Quran as well. Or could be somebody who is very powerful of this time, like Elon Musk. In the end, when we pass away, we always pass away empty-handed. And the only thing that's left on our body is a shroud, just a piece of cloth. So in the first verse, Allah talks about what happened to Abu Lahab in this dunya. Neither his wealth nor his relatives helped him at the time. So what will happen to him on the day of judgment? Sayasla Narunrata Lahab. He will burn in a flaming fire. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that he was known as Abu Lahab due to the complexion of his skin. And Lahab means flame. And he used to feel proud of himself being called Abu Lahab. So his end is also going to be the same, he is going to be in fire. So will his wife, the carrier of thorny kindling. Meaning, that his wife who used to carry those thorny branches, she too will enter the fire. And the woman who was so obedient to his husband in causing discomfort to Rasulullah that she gathered those branches, those thorny branches, and laid it in the path of Rasulullah She will be carrying that as a load on top of her head on the, on, on, when entering the hellfire. And there's other narrations which, which actually explain what this means. And they explain that she, when, she is, when she will enter Jahannam in this state, she will actually be carrying this wood to kindle the fire in which Abu Lahab is burning. So in the dunya, she was causing trouble to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by putting those thorny branches in his path. And now in the end, she's using those thorny branches to kindle the fire of her husband. Around her neck will be a rope of twisted fiber. So we read in the third verse, Sayasna Naran Zata Lahab, Abu Lahab is in fire, Wamra Atahu Hamma Latal Hakab, her wife is in fire, and she is putting the wood in the fire where Abu Lahab is burning, and on top of that, another Adab is on her, that there is a rope twisted around her neck, and in this state she will be made to enter the Jahannam. Brothers and sisters, if you read the Quran and analyze, you will see that Allah has mentioned paradise in it. Some people take inspiration from rewards and that is a motivation, motivation for them to work towards something good. And Allah has also mentioned Jahannam in it. Some people take motivation from the fear of failure, so that is why Jahannam is mentioned. Allah has mentioned about Iman and the qualities of people who have Iman. And also mentioned about the disbelievers and what their qualities are what their end is going to be. But Allah has talked in general terms about the people of faith, illa ladina amanu, not specifically pointing out to a person, or wal ladina kafaru, the disbelievers, not pointing out to a certain person. But there are very few people who have been mentioned by name. We have heard Firam's name, read his name in the Quran, his aides, Haman and Qarun. But if you have a look at the life of Rasulullah there were so many people in Makkah who were opposing him and who were his enemies. But none of them have been mentioned by name. But his uncle who was so staunchly opposed to Rasulullah Allah revealed a surah in his name such that until the day of judgment people are going to curse him when they say Tabbat yada abila abiyamata People recite this during Tarabi People will recite this during their Quran when they when they recite the Quran, children memorize. So he received the treatment like no other disbeliever. And apparently it seems like the reason why Abu Lahab received such a treatment is that being his uncle, he had really observed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what we say up close and personal. His, as his uncle, he had seen his truthful with his own eyes. His entire life and actions were in front of him. But still he went to such an extreme and his wife also joined his hands that he adopted a position of opposition to Rasulullah So that is why Allah brought such an end unto him and named the surah after him. 
There is no surah called Abu Jahal. There is no surah by the name of any other leaders of Makkah. But Allah revealed a surah by Abu Lahab's name. May Allah give us the understanding to recognize haq or the truth and not stand opposite to it while we have recognized what the truth is. And may Allah protect us from such an end as Abu Lahab. Barakidu da'amana and alhamdulillahi wa sallam.